and I'm just gonna swipe at these chickens. And we're going to fly. I just recorded this entire video with my mic muted. Yep. So here we go again. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my comprehensive guide for everything you need to know about update 1.21 coming to Minecraft. I will have timestamps down below if you guys would like to skip around, but I just ask that if you enjoy the content today, please subscribe as I have tons of videos on the way and it would really help me out a lot. Without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into it talking about the dungeons and the dungeon loot coming in this update. As you guys may not know, the main feature of update 1.21 is of course the trial chambers. Where we're at right now is the entrance to the trial chambers and basically what these are are gigantic sprawling dungeons that you can find throughout your world that have really good replayability for those that might be in a multiplayer server. Now this becomes apparent through two of the main mechanics in the trial chambers. The first thing is the trial spawner which we can find right here. You'll notice that they're active because they are, well, kind of embalmed in flames. And you'll notice that we have a bunch of mobs that are spawning from the spawners. So I'm gonna go ahead and kill every single one of them. And once we kill all of the mobs that come from a spawner, we're actually going to get a piece of treasure. Now, what we just got from that spawner was a trial key. So we'll go ahead and pick that up. This one right here is gonna drop us some loot too. We also got another trial key. So basically what these trial keys can do is they can open special blocks that you find inside of the trial chambers called vaults. Now for the sake of example, I went ahead and grabbed some from creative so that I could show you guys. You will come across these at random in your trial chambers and they will look something like this, a gigantic skull with its mouth open, ready to eat the key that you have. You'll also notice that you can see a little bit of a preview of what you can get from these. And I'll go over the entire loot table in just a moment, but we'll go ahead and put our key inside of the vault and you'll see that we are going to get various rewards from this vault. Now, there are two different types of spawners and vaults that you can find. What you just saw us fight was actually just a regular trial spawner, and this is a regular trial vault. If we go ahead and walk over here, you'll notice that there is a special type of vault that is hidden out of the way that we have to kind of make our way towards, and we can't just find it down on the ground floor. Now, this is an ominous vault, and they get opened with ominous trial keys. So we'll go ahead and give this an open real quick. We'll see what we get. We get a special banner pattern, a wind charge, and an iron block. So we noticeably got much better loot than what we did before, a very exclusive, unique piece of gear, some wind charges, and even nine ingots of iron. So how do we come across the ominous keys so that we can open the ominous vaults? Well, that is via a new potion that was added to the game called the ominous bottle. Now, what the ominous bottle does is it allows you to give yourself the bad omen effect at free will. If you guys don't know what the bad omen effect is, if you've ever killed a pillager captain, which is the one that has the banner on his back, you'll end up getting the bad omen effect, which can cause a raid at a village where you'll have a bunch of pillagers attack your village. Now, if we go ahead and drink this ominous bottle really quick, you'll notice that we get the bad omen effect. However, if we get within line of sight of a trial spawner, you will see that that turns blue and I have these blue skulls that are going to generate around my person and I have the trial omen effect for the next 15 minutes. You'll also notice that the skeletons that we're fighting have armor that they have just spawned with and it's actually trimmed up armor which is really cool to see. I've actually seen mods do that. It's really cool to see it in vanilla and you actually see once we kill all of these skeletons we are of course going to get a reward the exact same way. This time we got a potion, but sometimes we can get a ominous trial key, which can be used to open those ominous vaults that we see up there. I'll go ahead and go to creative mode and we'll fly over there and we'll give it one more open to see if we get anything special. But if not, I'll show you guys the whole loot table coming up. And so what we're gonna get is some wind charges, another ominous bottle and nine emeralds via the block. So, so far, you have seen the basic functionality for how these trial chambers work. You can come into here and you can fight all of the spawners and get all of the loot that you want and open the vaults or you can actually use the ominous bottles, which are gonna come from the pillager captains, or you can actually get them as random drops in the trial chambers and actually increase the difficulty of what you're doing to get even better loot. 
You'll also notice that I'm fighting a brand new mob inside of this room, which you guys just saw is like a little tornado wind guy. Those guys are called breezes, which we will touch up on a little bit more in a second. But I want to go ahead and clear out this room really quick and see what kind of loot we could get. All right, so just like that, we've cleared out both of the spawners. This time, though, nothing too crazy. We just got food from each of them. I do have a leftover key, though, which we could use right here. So we'll go ahead and slap that into the vault and we'll see what we get. We get some diamonds, we get some honey blocks or bottles of honey, emerald and an enchanted axe, which actually seems pretty good. Now, you might also notice that I have a bunch of different effects on me right now. And this is actually from having the trial omen effect. Whenever we're actually attacking these uh, spawners right here, they will spawn some random potion effects, which will affect both you and the enemies you're fighting, making both of you stronger. So that is something that you do need to look out for when fighting the ominous spawners. And we do have another vault up here that we have found. So we can go ahead and open this up, see if we get anything special. We just get some more wind charges, enchanted crossbow, and that's about it. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to the surface and we're gonna go over all of the loot tables that come with these trial chambers so you know what to expect. And then we'll talk about the brand new mobs in this update. So when it comes to the loot inside of these trial chambers, this is what you will find from the normal vaults. We will have enchanted bows and crossbows, enchanted iron axes, diamond axes, and some armor. We also have emeralds and some arrows that can drop, as well as iron, honey bottles, golden apples, shields, wind charges, diamonds, golden carrots, enchanted books, as well as the bolt armor trim and the guster banner pattern. Now from the ominous vaults, you're gonna see a definite uptick in uniqueness and just general good rewards. Here we have emeralds, wind charges, slowness air, arrows, diamonds, ominous bottles, which you can then use to again, continue with the effect. You also get these blocks of emerald, diamond, and iron, which can drop, as well as enchanted diamond gear and a crossbow. You also have brand new enchantments like wind burst, breach, and density, which we'll get to in a minute. We have an enchanted golden apple, the flow armor trim, the flow banner pattern, and the heavy core. So, Let's go ahead and go over some more dungeon loot. So what exactly is the heavy core? Well, if you decide to kill yourself a breeze mob, you will end up getting a breeze rod. You'll also get these wind charges, which you can use for really silly things like flying up walls and jumping huge gaps and all of the sort. Wind charges are a very, very fun item. And they're one of the coolest things Mojang has added in a while. But we also have the breeze rod here. So if we take the heavy core, which we get from a very rare chance in the ominous vault, and we combine it with a breeze rod, we actually get the mace. Now the mace is a brand new weapon added to the game and it is a very rare drop. The heavy core only has like a 2.5% chance of coming from those ominous vaults. And the main thing about the mace is the farther that you fall going downward and then you hit a mob, the more damage you will deal. As you saw with that breeze, it just instantly died from one hit because I fell from up high. Now, this will also negate any kind of fall damage uh, if you're in survival, so long as you actually hit the target before you fall. And you'll notice I just didn't take any damage. I mean, my hearts are low, but they were kind of already low. But you'll notice that I didn't take any damage from doing that, which is fantastic. You can fall from as high as you want into the sky and hit an enemy, and you won't get hurt as long as you actually hit them before you hit the ground. Now, these enchantments right here are going to make the mace so much better than it is at base value, and it's already pretty good. We have the density enchantment, which increases the damage per blocks fallen, so you have to fall less to deal even more damage. We have the breach enchantment, which reduces the effectiveness of armor on the target you're attacking, which in PvE isn't really that crazy, but if you're doing the trial chambers and the ominous trial chambers at that, where the enemies are always spawning with armor, this can be pretty good. And then we have the wind burst enchantment. Now, I'm going to see if I can find the video. I can't exactly remember who it was from, but I'll make sure to have it linked in the description. This is what the wind burst enchantment is capable of. And essentially, it gives you a burst of a wind charge and kind of throws you up in the air after you hit an enemy. And this can allow you to do absolute crazy things like take down the wither in one go with the mace. It is just absolutely fantastic. And it is an ominous vault exclusive. So the other two books you can just get by going Going throughout the world maybe find them in chess you can get them through the enchanting table but the wind burst enchantment is only from the ominous vault so it is a true treasure enchantment you want to keep your eyes out for 
Now, before we move on over into the other stuff, I do want to show you guys what the Guster banner pattern looks like, which is, of course, a breeze. And we also have the flow banner pattern, which looks like this. And doing a little bit of teleportation magic, we can go ahead and take a look at what the armor trims look like. This is the flow armor trim, which will only come from the ominous vaults. And this is how you duplicate it using a breeze rod in the middle. And this is what it looks like. This is by far the best looking armor trim that we've gotten from this update out of the two. And the main reason that I like this one so much is because of the horns that you actually get on your shoulder pads, you get them on the sides of your helmet and on the top of them as well. It just looks absolutely fantastic. Over here, we have the bolt armor trim, which is duplicated with a block of copper. And this one is more of just kind of some squares and rectangles and some dots. I'm not necessarily the biggest fan of this armor trim personally. It is the more common of the two, but it just doesn't look that great in my opinion i am definitely team flow now before moving on over to the mobs i actually want to go ahead and talk about how you can find these trial chambers because i'm sure that many of you guys are probably wondering how am i going to come across these big sprawling trial chambers underground without needing a bit of luck well, if you actually have a cartographer villager and they are at least the journeyman level they will actually sell you trial chamber maps so if i go oh i didn't put anything in there if I go and I grab a compass really quick and grab some emeralds and go into his trade menu, you'll actually see that I can buy a map directly from him. And if you look in the middle, you will see a gigantic square. And that is where the trial chamber is marked underground. You won't have to worry about loading into a brand new world or loading up new chunks and having a hard time finding them. All you need is a villager and he will sell you a map. So with the explanation of the new dungeon and all of the dungeon loot out of the way, let's go ahead and move on over to the brand new mobs. Now, as you guys saw, we did have a breeze right here, but I kind of had to talk about it prematurely. And the breeze, of course, will drop the wind charges and the breeze rods. I don't know if I mentioned it already, but the breeze rods function very similarly um, to blaze rods in the sense that you can use them to uh, turn them into wind charges instead of blaze rods into blaze powder. Um, of course, you use the rod to craft the mace, but if you have excess rods, you can turn them into wind charges. These are only going to come from the breeze mob. Now, we also have the bog. Now, this is a brand new skeleton variant. It's very similar to the stray. Uh, think of the husk compared to the zombie. Uh, these guys will spawn inside of swamps, but most notably, they will also spawn inside of trial chambers. Their main drops are arrows of poison as well as their bones. They're a really cool looking mob. They have fungus growing out of them, and uh, it's a really, really, really Really nice look to him and I'm really glad that Mojang is embracing um, the variants and all that kind of stuff. Now as far as I know it is very possible that the next two things that I talk about are going to come in the update 1.20.5 but considering that Mojang has said that all of the features for the 1.21 update have been completed I wouldn't be surprised if these are bundled in with 1.21 so I'm just going to assume that they are but if they're not don't yell at me. Anyways, we have the Armadillo right here, and the Armadillo is the brand new passive mob that comes with this update, and their main function is Scoot. So the way that you get this is you actually just have a regular brush like you would use for archaeology, and then you just right click on the Armadillo and you get the Scoot, or the Scute, I'm not exactly sure. Anyways, uh, with the Scoot, you can use this to craft dog armor. So if we go ahead and walk into here, you can actually see what some of the dog armor looks like on these puppies, but you might also notice that the puppies look a little different. And that is because there is a bunch of brand new dog variants that were added to the game. Also, before I get too uh, mixed up in the dog variants, I just want to showcase something really quick. Dog armor is really strong. <laughs> You'll notice that the dog did not take any damage from that. Um, and that is because dog armor absorbs all damage. And once dog armor is broken, then the dog itself starts taking damage. I, I know that was a little tragic for me to just slam a mace on its head. Um, but I wanted to showcase that dog armor is extremely powerful in this update. Anyways, going on over to the dog variants. We have the woods dog. I'm, I'm just going to give you guys a guess on where you think these guys generate. A uh, little bit of a little bit of a tip. They generate from the woods, um, aka forest. We also have the pale dog, which is the default one that we all know and love, which comes from taigas. Uh, we have the ashen one, which comes from snowy taigas. The black dog, which comes from old growth pine taigas. 
the chestnut dog, which comes from old growth spruce. We have the rusty dog, which comes from jungles. The spotted dog from savannas. We have the striped dog, which comes from the wooded badlands. And the snowy dog from the snowy groves. So whenever it comes to all of the mobs in this update, we have a ton of different dog variants, which can generate, which can also wear dog armor, thanks to the armadillo. We have the brand new breeze, which can generate inside of trial chambers, as well as the bogged, which will generate there as well, and is a skeleton poison variant. Now, with the brand new mobs out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about a lot of the new blocks that you can find. First up, as you guys probably saw in the trial chambers, we have a lot of different types of copper. So you'll see that we have the trap doors, we have these little bulbs right here, which are really cool light blocks, by the way. The way that they function is that they can be powered on, and while they are directly getting a redstone signal, they will have a bit of redstone in the middle. And then you can take away the redstone signal, they will stay lit, and you'll actually notice that the redstone little dot is gone. And then you can power them off, they still have that signal, so the red dot is in the middle, and then you take it away, and it's gone. Personally, I absolutely love the oxidized version because it just looks so clean. You can use this in so many cool builds, and I'm very excited to get my hands on this whenever the update actually comes out. Uh, we also have the chiseled variants here. We have the copper grates, which are just going to be fantastic for buildings since you can see through them. There's going to be so many cool things that you'll be able to do with these. And we also have the doors. I think the doors are pretty underrated. I feel like not enough people are talking about the doors. They got a really satisfying opening sound and they can be used for so many structures in the game as well that you don't even need to use copper for. Now, we also have a bunch of different tough variants. We have the chiseled tough as well as the regular tough blocks like stairs, slabs, and walls. We have the polished tough blocks and then we also have the brick tough blocks which are fantastic and even the chiseled tough bricks as well moving on over we have a bunch of new pottery sherds uh we have the scrape sherd right here with an axe on the front the flow sherd with the flow symbol which is kind of like the wind and we also have the guster sherd which is of course inspired by the breeze and moving on over to the final block in this update we actually have the crafter which can be used to craft things at will and this is going to be fantastic for farms in the future uh, as an example let's say we have a wood farm and i want to make this generate sticks so that i can sell them to villagers i can disable all of these slots fill in these slots with wood, and if we were to feed this chest with oak planks, and I were to grab a redstone torch really quick, and go ahead and give this a redstone signal, you'll actually see that it will craft sticks at will, and we can fully automate this so that we are able to shoot this into a hopper, which can then shoot this into a chest, uh, and then we can just walk up to the chest, grab all of our sticks, and just trade them to a Fletcher, which is a really, really, really cool feature. It's one of the coolest things that we've seen out of Minecraft in a while. I'm very glad that Mojang has finally added this. Now, finally, this is probably a top three feature for me. We have the new potion effects that has come with this update. Uh, I didn't really mean to kill this creeper because I was going to use him for something later, but that's fine. Uh, we, we have my boy Bobberton and we have Himothy over here. I'll, I'll just grab the spawn egg. Um, so if we open up this chest, you'll see all the new potions that we got. Uh, this is what I talked about earlier, by the way, the ominous bottle. You can find these inside of trial chambers. You can get them from the pillager captains and they will result in a ominous trial key for you for the vaults. Outside of that, though, we have the potion of weaving, which can be crafted with an awkward splash potion and cobble web the potion of infestation which can be crafted with an awkward potion and stone we have the potion of oozing with an awkward potion and slime block and then the best potion in my opinion in the game the potion of wind charging which will come via a wind charge and an awkward splash potion. So we're going to take all of these and I'm going to basically show you guys what they're all about. So first off, we have the potion of weaving. So I'm going to spawn a few creepers here. I'm going to throw the potion of weaving. You'll see the new particles that they have on top of them. And if I end up killing these creepers, you'll notice that they spawn a cobweb. Uh, not entirely sure what this can necessarily be used for. I do know that this is a potion effect inside of the trial chambers that happens. So it could be used to slow down the player. We have the potion of infestation which is probably not going to give anything unless I'm lucky. Uh, basically what this potion does, actually, there we go, is there's a chance every single time you hit an enemy that has this potion effect that they will spawn silverfish. So that is a very cool effect right there. Uh, we also have the potion of oozing, which if I kill this creeper, you will notice that he will spawn slimes. And by far the best potion 
in all of Minecraft, the potion of wind charging. You could probably guess what it's going to do, but I'm going to showcase you what happens if you kill a lot of enemies, or in this case chickens, in a very cooped up area all at once with a sweeping edge strike. It is absolutely fantastic, and that doesn't even scratch the surface of what you can do. Basically, in survival, you can make full-on elytra launchers using this system. So if I put an elytra on my person and I dig a little hole here, I'm just going to put as many chickens as possible. If you can get yourself a proper chicken farm to get as many chickens as possible for you at any time you want, this is going to be huge. We're going to throw the potion of wind charging. I'm going to swap over to survival, and I'm just going to swipe at these chickens. And we are going to fly almost a thousand blocks in the air and now I can just fly with my elytra to whatever coordinates I want to. It is insane what you can do with this potion. Absolutely insane. And I love it. It is the coolest potion in the game by far. And this is one thing that I am going to make a ton of in my survival worlds and use them as elytra launchers. But ladies and gentlemen... That is basically everything you need to know about update 1.21 coming to Minecraft very, very soon. Let me know what you guys thought of this video down in the comments. Thank you so much for spending your time with me today. I really do appreciate it. Make sure to subscribe if you would like to see more from me in the future. And I will see you guys next time.